Everyone knows that winning a championship can change the perspective of somebody's career, change their legacy, so on and so forth. My question for y'all, what player wins a championship to cement their legacy? Luca, easily. Dude is 25 years old. He's already had a hell of a start to his career. Um, the only things he haven't done is won MVP in a championship. So I'm assuming if they win the championship, he would get finals MVP. I know that guy Kyrie over there would, would be a candidate to steal it for sure. <laughs> but I just think, man, at 25 years old, you win a championship, your finals MVP, um, you got all the numbers. That he's he's going to have numbers for the rest of his career. So I think anytime a guy like Luka, who's put up the numbers, um, can can solidify with a championship, and eventually you'll probably get an MVP. We're talking about a historic start to a career at only 25 years old. By the time he's 30, who knows what his numbers and his accolades continue to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I was going a different direction. I liked how you went with the younger guy. I wanted to go with a guy who has won, and Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant won with the Warriors, but I would love to see Kevin Durant go to a – he is on a new team, but, like, see him win – Without Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, he got close with the toe on the line with the Nets. But like, I would love to see him get all the way there and win the championship. I was really considering Kevin Durant for this uh, question too, but I'm gonna have to go with Joel Embiid. Mm -hmm. I think about a person that has a lot of just accolades that are attached to his name. He's got MVPs, scoring titles, especially when you. I feel like he's always compared to his counterpart into uh, Nikola Jokic and what he's done. I feel like the the championship for Jokic has kind of elevated him and elevated his name into those top talks. I think Joel Embiid is just kind of missing that. I mean, every time he's come up, it's always talking about the second round. So uh, a ring would do wonders for that man. Yeah, I saw a lot of memes about Joel Embiid yesterday. He ain't doing nothing but chilling at the crib. Yeah, he's tweeting though. He's tweeting. He's tweeting. You say but wow. Yeah, he said, he's, wow, he's he had LOL. an LOL once. <laughs> uh, we're not getting the traditional Joel Embiid tweets, you know, just keeping it very simple. But I saw some, like, man. I, you know what? Let's not even bring him up. Joel, you, we got love for you, man. I, I agree with Mike. But if we're talking about the people that are left, Tatum is very similar to Luka. Yeah. In a sense that this man that came to the league, made all NBA first teams a bunch of different times, all-stars almost every single year of his career. I think he's a five-time all-star already, which don't even make sense to Never me. Never missed the playoffs, right? Mind. Never missed the playoffs. Has a bunch of conference finals appearances, has an NBA finals appearance. Like, I was asked a question a few months ago, which young player, and this was before his birthday, so he was under 25 years old, which 25 or younger player has the maybe opportunity to eventually end up, like, top 10 all-time? And strictly off the resume, Luka... And Jason Tatum are on the trajectory. Yeah. Now, you got to do a lot. You got to win multiple MVPs. You got to win multiple championships to end up top 10 for sure. But getting that first championship would mean a lot to Tatum because, I mean, e even he said it himself, and I don't know if I agree completely, that nobody's going to give him an MVP until he wins a championship. Do y'all think the success too early for Tatum has been a, like, has added a lot more pressure to him? I think it's changed the way people think about him as a player. Then when you talk about being a rookie and dunking on LeBron James in the conference finals and then being in the NBA finals versus Steph Curry or being in, what, three to four conference finals already, you kind of get bored with the accolades because it's like you did this before, you did this yeah. before, you did this before. And that championship is the next thing because I don't think he, he's going to do enough to win an MVP anytime soon. Right, maybe I'm wrong, but like you got to go against Luca, Shade, yep. both of the centers across basketball. It's gonna be tough to win an MVP. Wimby now, <laughs> Wimby, right? Um, Kobe White, and then the the championship is the one thing that he can do now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't. The pressure. I'm gonna say no, just because I feel like Jason Tatum is not. He hasn't been in it by himself. Like when you look at some of these other dudes, Luca has had to really get it out the mud and try to figure it out. Booker had to go in Phoenix and really try to figure it out alone. He's always been there with a solid foundation of having a Jalen Brown next to him, um, having Brad Stevens be able to put things together um, as a coach and as a guy in the front office uh, place now. They went and got Kyrie and Gordon Hayward. I know Gordon Hayward was injured a lot, but he has always had proper things around him mm -hmm. to you know not have to feel all of the pressure constantly versus – some of his counterparts, like Luka Doncic at times, was like just kind of out there trying to make things happen. Um, so I, I don't think it's been too much pressure that's kind of, you know, like, man, I feel it, it comes with the territory and they've always really had good teams. And he's benefited from that. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I was going to say the same thing. If anything, I feel like the pressure would be on him now because his team, I, they've been really uh, like a high seed before, but, I mean, they're the favorite right now. They're kind of yeah. crushing the playoffs. So, the pressure should be on him, you know, rightfully so. Yeah. Lose Kyrie, go get Kimba. <laughs> yeah. Like I, just, I, I, I like the conversation around it, but I also feel like people should look at it as more like 
he accomplished a lot at a young age, whereas, like, instead of getting bored with it, why don't we appreciate what he has done? And being from 20 to 26 in multiple conference finals, a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is he's going in reverse order. So what I've been seeing, like, I remember at some point in the playoffs, I was seeing some stuff with Luka. I think they had uh, against the Clippers. It was like, man, look, can Luka, can Luka be the whatever? You know how those conversations go. They build you up to tear you down. I feel like uh, Tatum... It's kind of like they're dismissing it early, and then at some point he's going to be this guy that everybody's going to look at and be like, "Man, look at look at him." Mm -hmm. you well, know like, what I mean, if you look back at it, like he's been doing this. <laughs> yeah. That's just that's just how it goes. If Tatum is Tatum is somebody that they'll look back on and, and be like, "Man, he was really good." Man, I didn't appreciate this in the moment. Yeah, <laughs> basically, my this is he's this generation's my Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. Mm. Oh, because when I was younger. Tim Duncan was like this boring player to me. And I but didn't see, really recognize him. You think Tatum him. is boring? No, no, well, not boring, but they were just so successful that you're like, yeah, the Spurs oh, are in the finals. I yeah, the Spurs are in the conference finals. Yeah, Tim yeah, Duncan was saying. definitely for us. And also, Tim Duncan's like top 10 all time. I'm not saying that's what Tatum is at yeah. all. <laughs> Please don't miss it. Tim Duncan, thing. when we were kids, was definitely boring. I think that's, yeah, yeah. I agree. I'm kind of one for it. But on now, both go sides. watch 2014 Spurs exactly. highlights. Do yeah. it right now. Exactly. Ooh, that boy was killing. Well, don't do it right. Finish the show, but then do it because that was different. Yeah. That was different. Tatum, man, who who is who is Tatum like in a certain sense? That's a that's a that's a good conversation to try yeah. to figure out mm -hmm. because because um, it's kind of hard to also because he's also been to the finals and like he he's been there. So like who's been there came up short but hasn't been back. They never got back. I know Tatum has a chance to get back, but like some guys get once and they never get a chance to go back. Yeah, yeah, he's interesting. I I mean, the more and more I'm thinking about it, I don't know if he has a direct Dirk? parallel. Is it Dirk? Dirk, Dirk, Dirk got, got there to the finals. Yeah. Lost to D Wade and them. He made it. Dirk made it twice. Though. Those teams are always really good. I mean, he always Tatum's had some help. Yeah. Steve and Nash. He did have Finley. like a flame out in the playoffs where they lost in the first round as a one seed versus an eight. Yeah. And the only way I can like parallel that is last year's conference finals yes. where they were down 0-3 to the Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. Maybe, that's actually, I guess. That's actually very similar. But actually. then again, the Celtics, like you mentioned earlier, it is so, so much more help so much, than what Dirk so had much more. in that time frame. That's the toughest thing to kind of parallel with Tatum is like no, not a lot of people who haven't won has had like these great teams. He's been on some really, really good teams. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like, you know, I don't think it's too much pressure. I think the talk is kind of, yeah, silly, but I, how much attention do we really pay to that? Right. We all know Tatum can hoop. He's going to get his ring. He's, yeah. If He's a Celtic. He, if somehow he doesn't end up with a ring, that's in his gonna be career, crazy. I don't know what the conversation. That's gonna be crazy. Like.